Today we have with us Dr. Jitendra Singh from Wharton School. Please give him a warm welcome. <laughs> Dr. Jitendra Singh is a Saul P. Steenberg Professor of Management at Wharton School, where he previously served as Vice Dean for International Academic Affairs. From 2007 to 2009, he was Dean and Shaw Foundation Chair Professor of Strategy, Management and Organization at Nanyang Business School, Singapore. He holds an MBA degree from Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, and a PhD from Stanford University. His earlier research focused on evolutionary approaches to strategy and organization, organizational change, and Indian software services sector. He has co-authored several books, the latest being the India Way, which shows how management that focuses on long-term thinking and an enlightened view of workforce are at the heart of India's explosive economic growth. Now I request Dr. Jitendra Singh to share his thoughts with us. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to see you all. In fact, I was here <clears throat> during the month of January and I was a little concerned that if you were the same group of students that I had spoken to back in January, maybe seeing you twice in six months might be an overdose. But I was assured that you were a new group of students, and so I'm very happy to talk to you. <clears throat> I think I'm going to stand and walk around a little bit, if you don't mind. What I'm going to talk about today is, and how do I, if I just click this, no, this is the problem, all right, that's fine. I should have listened more carefully to you. There we go. Um, really, if you need these slides that I'm going to show, they will be available later, but let me just, where do I have to point this to make it work? That side, then, all right. Um, there's a very specific purpose for me to talk to you this afternoon. And my colleagues and I have just written a book called The India Way. The subtitle is How India's Top Business Leaders Are Revolutionizing Management. What I'm very pleased by is that even as the book is selling quite well in the United States and other parts of the English-speaking world, it seems to have really taken off in India. Shouldn't be a surprise. We have a gentleman who's a publisher involved in the book industry, and he tells me that, in fact, people that he knows from Western multinationals are buying significant numbers of the book and shipping them off to Europe and to America and to an author that is always, it's like music to my ears. Now, you know, I should also say that I'm well aware that academic books don't sell in the millions, at least not usually. So I do not plan to retire after having written this book. I probably have a few more books in me before I would say maybe in 15 or 20 years I would be ready to retire, but not yet. The agenda is, I'll speak for about 30 minutes, and uh, then we'll take q and I'm actually much more interested to hear what are some thoughts in your mind. I'm not sure what the problem is. It doesn't work. Where am I pointing to? <laughs> you can at least tell me where am I pointing to, otherwise I'll be pointing at all the people in this room. So there is some mystery I can't decode. What I'm, where am I supposed to point to? Toward there. Good, right is where I tell me. Behind that. So the rack is over here. All right, all right, all right. Now, now it's working. I just need to be told where to point. That's all. I have a PhD. I can tell you where to point. <laughs> you know what a PhD 
you use for, right? Point here, dummy. <laughs> So let me talk to you about the India Way. There's a large number of slides. We probably will not be, go through, be able to go through all of them. Let me just locate the ideas of the book on a broader stage for you. Why did we do this study? What's noteworthy on the previous slide, if you read carefully, there are two people who are with Indian names. And myself and my co-author, Professor Arbir Singh, are both alumni from IIM Ahmedabad. Um, but the other two are actually not Indians, they are Americans. Uh, Peter Capelli is an expert on human resources. Michael Yusim is an expert on leadership and corporate governance. And Michael Yusim, interestingly enough, spent part of his childhood in Mumbai, it used to be called Bombay in the old days in Bombay and in Pune, and has very fond memories of India. So what's interesting is that this started as a conversation between me and Mike Hussein. Mike has been quite involved. We launched executive programs for Wharton. I was one of the people that helped lead that in the early 1990s. And I've had the privilege to actually, in the background, be among the leadership of creating an India agenda for Wharton. So I see my good friend John Jacobs picture back there, and Bala, of course, is a dear friend. In the late 90s, we actually helped create the Indian School of Business, which is now up and running and doing quite well. So there have been a number of things going on. Mike Yusin was involved in this executive education agenda. And I remember going to him in spring of 2007, of maybe January, February, and saying, you know, the India story, in fact, is moving along extremely well. What we should try to do is, let's try and interview people directly and find out what's going on in India. More specifically, let's try and understand more deeply what is it that is unique and distinctive about Indian organizations? Everybody you speak to, whether in India or outside India, says we know that Indian organizations are different. But that's that's sort of you know not a particularly helpful observation. What matters is what is the content of those differences. So we said, let's try and interview some of the top executives of Indian firms, and let's try and get a deeper answer to the question, what is the content of these differences? What are the details of Indian management practices? How are they distinctive? Only then can you say this is how Indian firms are different than American firms or Japanese firms or European firms. That's where the study started and it took about three years of time. Uh, just, I never really thought about this until recently, I've been doing interviews in Bangalore and in Mumbai and in Delhi. And each one of us has some world-class capabilities in his own right. Harbir is a strategy specialist. I am sort of somewhat broader in that I started in the field of organizations, but in fact, have interests in strategy and technology and entrepreneurship and corporate governance. So each one of us has world-class capabilities in his own right. It took four of us three years each. So think about it, 12 man years, because more or less we were doing this full time. And this is the reason why no one else has done it. These things take time. But we are at a stage of our career. Fortunately, we are all we have been chair professors, all four of us for some time already. There are no more promotions for us. We are already at the highest level. And we have to have the luxury of saying, let us study something that is really important and devote the time to it that it really needs. So it took four of us three years to get this book out. And of course, we are like very proud parents. Our little baby has grown up and now the world is talking about it.